I never got taught to think about food. It was just something I was interested in. Is meat good or is meat bad? Nobody ever talked about diet. They just wanted to give you meds. I feel like almost every single thing is some sort of like corrupted thing for someone to make money. Humans smell differently when they're healthy versus mm. not healthy, right? So even our like cum. Absolutely. Because mine tastes pretty good, I'll be honest. <laughs> if you really want to encourage muscle growth, you're going to need to eat meat at every single meal. Because I do feel like a lot of people out there want to be healthy, but they make it seem difficult. Anyone out there who's insecure about their size of their penis, you told me you could grow half an inch in length and girth. Yeah. <laughs> it's one study, right? At, at what point did you get started? Because you told me you were vegan. I was. For two years or five years? I was a vegan for seven months. Oh, seven months. But I was just, I was not a regular vegan. I was like a super vegan. It's called a raw vegan. Mm. So I, I grew up like generic childhood suburbs of Virginia. Mom is a nurse. <laughs> Dong. <laughs> Mom is a nurse, dad is a doctor. I had asthma, eczema, allergies growing up. So I had an inhaler, a puffer growing up. I got over medicated by my parents, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And I basically was in the suburbs trying to get into trouble. I was skateboarding a little bit when I was a kid, but the eczema was a problem for me, it kind of itchy and dry skin and these little bumps. And then the asthma would limit what I could do. At some point you figure out why that happened? Well, that took, I didn't figure out what was going on with my eczema till, till years and years later when I was in residency after medical school. Yeah. My whole life, the majority of my life, I lived with eczema. And in medical school, I did a lot of jujitsu. I know you said you were doing jujitsu. Yeah. And I got skin infections from the eczema. It's called impetigo. So you can get, you know, the eczema is like little bumps on your skin and then it causes little blisters that pop and you can get infections. So the eczema was a pain in my ass. The asthma was a pain in the ass. I had asthma attacks, which is like a breathing issue mm -hmm. at certain times in my life. My parents are in the medical field. Nobody ever talked about diet as a part of that. They just wanted to give you meds. Yeah. I hate, I hate that shit. Yeah, it's, it's such a pain in the ass. It's horrible. And so basically in my life, um, you know, I, I went to college. I took a bunch of time off after college. I was like a ski bum. I traveled a bunch. I hiked from Mexico to Canada. Eventually I went back to PA school, which is like PAs between nurse and a doctor. And I worked in cardiology for four years. And then I kind of got fed up with the medical system. So once I was in the medical system, I realized more firsthand that it's basically just trying to give people medication. They, yeah, 100%. They, a lot of doctors are super smart and well-intentioned, but they don't really understand the roots of illness. We're not taught to question that. So I went back to medical school, and then I did after medical school, which is four years, you do a residency in your specialty. And it was during medical school that my eczema got really bad again, and residency, that I started thinking about what could be in my diet. Even though I was eating a healthy diet, I realized that there were things in my diet that were triggering my eczema. And that was when I did the carnivore thing. I see. So I was, for a year and a half, I only ate meat. About 10 years before that, I had seven months where I only ate plants. And when I only ate plants, I had farts that were worse than yours all the time. Really? Yeah, really bad. I doubt that. Really bad. No, it was super bad. That, it was super bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. When I was eating vegan and I, you're trying to gain muscle mass, I lost muscle mass. So I was 145 pounds, mm -hmm. now I'm 165 pounds. I'm 5'9", 165 now. I was 145 or even less when I was raw vegan. So I, it didn't help with the eczema. I had like three or four massive green poops a day. It was very inconvenient. Yeah, I do that too. You still have nah, green poops. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Photo or it didn't happen. And then, yeah. uh, and I had really bad gas. So at the time I was working in cardiology in an office smaller than this room with two other women, unfortunately, who, who were a nurse practitioner, not because they're women. Come on, man. It's not unfortunate because they're women. <laughs> oh, because of your gas. Because of my gas. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think maybe a guy's would have been understanding, but I was a raw vegan. I was in a small room with a nurse practitioner and, and a, another PA, and I didn't hear about it till I left the practice, but they were just always complaining to the CEO about how bad my gas was. And no how, way. Yeah, bro, it was worse than yours. That is hilarious. And that you, was didn't, good. you didn't let them know you were doing that? I mean, that's, I was sitting on a chair. That's the problem. I was sitting on a chair like, like what are you supposed crop, to say? You can't just be crop dusting these <laughs> but two I'm sitting girls on a chair. <laughs> I'm sitting on a chair like this. Like this couch cushion is supposed to be a fart receptacle, right? You're supposed to no, fart into dude, here. That's and it, disgusting. And it sucks it up. And then you get it's up. It's not and, a fucking <laughs> vacuum. It's a seat. <laughs> and then you get up and the fart goes in the air, man. It's horrible. It was horrible. So that the vegan diet didn't work for me. I do love flying though, because you can just fart the whole flight and no one knows who did it. <laughs> it's the same thing. But those seats on a plane, they don't hold anything. They're, they're like, they're like kind of plasticky. It just shoots so out. So funny. It's uh, and everyone's just looking at like, who the fuck did that? No one knows, man. <laughs> but they knew it was me. These poor women. I love, these are wonderful women. I didn't mean to say do that. Do you it still was talk a, to them? 
I haven't talked to them in years, but I don't know uh, if they'd even they even want to talk to me. They probably don't want to. They probably don't want to talk to me. They probably still think I have bad gas. That's hilarious. You probably do. I don't have bad gas now. Have you smelled my fart a single time we've been hanging I don't, out? I haven't heard you fart yet. I don't, I don't think I've, I've farted a couple times, but it's not too bad right now. Yeah, you do the, he does the sneaky one. I do like the sneak the attacks. <laughs> yeah. But they don't smell. So when your gut gets healthy, your farts shouldn't smell a lot. And I don't fart that much anymore, actually. Mm. So vegan to paleo. Paleo is like salads nuts, seeds, fruit, meat, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I was paleo for about 12 years. And I was, I was on a good quality paleolithic diet, no junk food. We can talk about why I think junk food is a major problem for people in general, but it's pretty obvious. And then even on that paleo diet, I still had eczema. I had a really bad eczema flare in medical school, a really bad eczema flare in residency, which is what you do after medical school. Mm -hmm. And that was when I just was like, forget it. This is annoying. I'm just going to get give it all the plants. Yeah. I heard Jordan Peterson on Rogan's podcast talking about the carnivore diet and saying that it really helped reverse his autoimmune disease. So I was like, okay, this is interesting. I have an autoimmune condition, asthma, eczema, allergies. Let me see if cutting out plants helps with that. So I cut out all plants. The only thing I ate for a year and a half was steak and liver and animal fat and salt. That's it. Mm. And maybe some ground beef. That was it. Maybe eggs occasionally, but I only ate that for a year and a half. And it, helped a lot with the eczema. The eczema completely went away, okay. but long-term not having the carbohydrates really made me suffer because I had muscle cramps, I had heart palpitations. I was talking to one of the guys here about how my testosterone dropped without carbohydrates from like 800 to 500 and I had sleep disturbances and stuff. So that was when I kind of added carbohydrates back in, but I wanted to think like, what are the healthiest sources of carbohydrates? And that was why I chose fruit and honey to add in. So now my diet is like meat and organs. We had liver together, grass fed beef. We had some steaks and, um, and then I have fruit, fruit juice. I make a lot of orange juice by hand or like orange juice on a juicer. I have raw milk, honey. That's basically what I eat now. And that seems to be a good, happy medium. So what am I not eating now? Like vegetables. And we can talk about that if you want, but I'll, I'll throw but it back you, over to you. You would say the, when you, once you switched the diet, the eczema went away, the asthma went away. Yes. And then just everything. Yeah. So I was already eating a healthy diet, but even within the context of a healthy diet, some of those foods, the vegetables seem to trigger the issues for me. I don't think everybody has issues with vegetables, yeah. but I think I've seen a lot of people now. I've worked with a lot of people. I've met a lot of people, a lot of Instagram comments and stuff. A lot of people who have autoimmune issues, other issues that don't resolve and are working hard to eat a healthy diet. A lot of times when they get rid of vegetables or limit them, those issues can resolve long-term. So mm -hmm. I don't think everybody needs to cut out vegetables, yeah. but for some people it can be uniquely helpful. It's an interesting thing. And the reason for this is that if you think about a plant, you know, you got the roots in the ground, you got a stem, you got the leaves. The whole purpose of all that apparatus of the plant is to make seeds, which they put in the fruit. And if, if animals go around eating leaves and stems and roots of plants, and there's no defense chemicals in there, the plant is never gonna pass its DNA to the next generation. Yeah. Seeds are plant babies. And so basically plants contain defense chemicals. We were talking about this mm -hmm. word. You were asking me what that defense word was. Mechanism, defense mechanism. Defense chemicals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we know this, like leaves of plants. If you think like, what is the healthiest food in the grocery store? You might say spinach or kale. Kale's really good, I heard. <laughs> you brought me some kale the other day as a joke. Yeah, that shit stung. I, I, I was surprised though. like. I knew you were against it and stuff, but when I bought it, like I was surprised the way it, sm it smelled like when you leave clothes in a washer and forget to change. Like I can't believe anyone would even eat that anyway. It's probably a little bit just moldy or that's it was just I would never eat that shit. It smelled so bad. And and if you if you look at that kale, there's no question that that kale is a better food than a Snickers bar. But for some people, the compounds in that kale, the defense chemicals, can cause issues. Mm -hmm. Kale is specifically a problem for like thyroid issues. A few other autoimmune conditions can be connected with kale. And what, we've, what we learn is that the leaves of plants accumulate heavy metals. Just this is the way plants work. That if you grow the plants in a soil with heavy metals, things like mercury, cadmium, arsenic, and lead. Have you heard of those? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. They're harmful for humans. Yeah. These are like toxic metals for humans. The leaves accumulate them. Spinach can be really high in heavy metals. Even lettuce can be high in heavy metals. So the idea here, again, is just if we look at the foods that humans eat in the wild the preferential foods are meat and organs. The least preferred foods are the vegetables, but that's completely different than what we hear in modern society. Mm -hmm. Vegetables are, are the, supposed to be the healthiest thing for us and we're supposed to limit the meat. Well, that, yeah, that, and that's what I was talking about with like, another thing is like that food pyramid. Like your whole, it feels like, a, like your whole life is a lie almost. Like my, as a kid, your whole, like you spend what, 12 years in school at least, just in, up until high school. It's like 12, 12, you graduate 12th grade. So it's like, 12, they're teaching you and you're, you're, you graduate like 17, 18. So up until then, and they're still pushing that little pyramid in school, but everything on that is pretty much 
incorrect. Not everything, but most of it. Well, but they're going to, they're going to tell you to limit butter. They're going to tell you to eat a small amount of meat and they're going to tell you to eat lots of whole grains, breads, right? And bread and stuff. Them, Which is bread isn't good for you at all. A right? lot of people have stomach issues from yeah. bread. You've been mentioning that your stomach kind of hurts sometimes. Yeah. And, um, you know, like a lot of people have stomach issues from bread. So bread isn't probably inherently bad, but I think that historically, evolutionarily, humans didn't eat a lot of grains. It's only within the last few thousand years that we started eating grains. And remember, Homo sapiens, our species, has been around I'm not, for- no, I'm, I'm straight. You're different. <laughs> <laughs> Homo sapiens has been around for 400,000 years. So a small percentage of the time we've been this species, straight or gay or whatever, yeah, yeah. We've, been, uh, we've been eating just mostly meat and fruit and honey and not, not many grains. It's only really recently we started eating grains. Huh. And the grains in the U.S. are particularly bad for a variety of reasons. They get sprayed with pesticides. Yeah, yeah. They get sprayed with a form of folic acid. It's hard for humans to do, digest. Do you feel too like there's always that thing where like the like big farmers just obviously wants to keep us sick mm -hmm. so they can. Keep, do you think that's even a thing where because I remember I got free lunch in school and like when I think back now to like what I was eating, it's just such shitty food. It's like not even real foods. Do you think that's a thing like where they're just I don't know if that's the cause like they're trying to keep us sick or it's just easier to you know probably cheaper and easier to like send out that garbage? I think that there's a lot of money to be made in giving kids processed food and giving adults processed food. Yeah. So this is an interesting statistic. The FDA, the USDA, they make governmental food guidelines. Mm -hmm. So just like the food pyramid, every five years they come out with guidelines. The 2020 to 2025 food guidelines form the basis of what kids are fed in schools. Yeah. On that committee are 20 people. Of those 20 people, 19 of those people have industry ties exactly. to pharmaceuticals, processed food, junk food. Like 95% of the people on the freaking committee are conf have conflict of interest. Yeah, exactly. So who's making the guidelines and what's the, what's the honesty? You know, there's no, there's no real transparency here. It's crazy. And then kids are fed foods based on those guidelines. That's one thing I've learned like as I've gotten a, like bigger and made more money and met more people. I feel like almost every single thing is some sort of like corrupted thing for someone to make money. Almost every, at someone else's expense too. Like on in every, everything, it's like every single fucking, especially with shit that goes in your body, like, like, you know, any sort of like pills and foods and drinks and like all that shit is just like crazy. The pharmaceutical industry is a multi-billion dollar. I mean, it's hundreds of yeah. billions of dollars. It's wild. It's huge. It's like a, that's another like black hole of like endless conversation. It's, I mean, it's a massive thing. And if you look at the history of the pharmaceutical industry, there is no shortage of court cases. There's no shortage of judgments against the pharmaceutical companies. Nobody goes to jail, but there are, there are, you know, billion dollar settlements, but the co pharmaceutical companies are making tens of billions of dollars on a drug and they get penalized maybe two or three billion. Dude, I know. It's like, so they, they're, oh, they're, no, oh yeah. no. And then, and nobody goes to jail, right? <laughs> nobody goes to jail. So it's, I mean, there's, there's been many scandals over the years of misrepresented data, drugs from the nineties, Vioxx is killing people, you know, the, the pharmaceutical companies don't have a great track record. I think that there are some pharmaceuticals that are certainly helpful for humans and Western medicine is not all bad. Yeah. If you get in a car accident, you, of course, yeah, you, of course. Want, you want the services that a hospital is gonna provide. But when money is involved and when we're talking billions and billions of dollars, I mean, the US healthcare industry, I think is trillions of dollars. It's a multi-trillion dollar industry. That's great. That's big money, bro. Yeah. That's a big number. That's a lot of zeros. Introducing Marlowe, the ultimate destination for premium grooming essentials. Elevate your daily routine with our exquisite collection of soaps and other luxurious products. We thoughtfully crafted an assortment of high quality face, shave, and body care essentials that contain our signature M blend to elevate your lifestyle effortlessly. Join the countless satisfied customers who have experienced the Marlowe difference. Visit our website or your nearest retailer today, or you're a little bitch. Another thing we were talking about was, um, I had brought up the food, like it was shitty for high school and stuff, and uh, even elementary school, but then you said that like baby formula, they, they made it illegal. What were, what were you saying again exactly? So this is interesting. So if we circle back to like breast milk, right? Have you ever tried breast milk? Yeah, it didn't taste that good when I tried it. Was like, at least at this age, you know. You didn't like it? When I was a baby, I probably liked it. You probably it. liked it as a baby. Yeah. So what a mother eats affects what's in the breast milk. 
So, yeah, and the, the breast milk I had tried, you know, she was on she wasn't on a good diet, you know, she wasn't drinking like water buffalo milk or anything. She it wasn't was like she wasn't eating grass fed. I don't beef. know what she was eating, but it wasn't it. <laughs> it wasn't good. No. All right, all right, fair enough. So the FDA looks at an average breast milk of of like an average of US women. And the average US woman doesn't eat a lot of good food, right? Yeah, exactly. They eat a lot of junk food, they eat a lot of seed oils, which is something we should talk about. These are like canola oil, soybean oil, um, corn, con- safflower, sunflower, sunflower oil, all these oils. Thanks for telling me. Yep. Um, and these oils contain a certain type of fat. It's a technical name, but I'll just say it linoleic acid. And so because the breast milk of these mothers is higher in linoleic acid than it would have been historically because they're eating extra seed oils because they're eating junk. The junk goes into the breast milk. The FDA looks at the junk breast milk and says the formula you give to infants in the, in the stores has to look like junk breast milk. Yeah, I get it. And then they say, if you're going to formulate an infant formula, it has to look like junk breast milk. And so it's illegal to make an infant formula without seed oils. That's crazy. It's illegal to make an infant formula without highly processed, refined oils. Now, we haven't really talked about seed oils, but these are made from seeds of plants that we would never have had large quantities of historically. Even though we're told canola oil is healthy or soybean oil is healthy, I mean, these are... These are highly oxidized, rancid, spoiled oils. If you look at a factory, there's a great video on YouTube of how canola oil is made. It's gross. So have you seen the hot dog one, how they make hot dogs? It's kind of like that. That but video is <laughs> fucked up too. Yeah, man. And then chicken nut and McNuggets at McDonald's. Bad news. Oh, Bad fuck. news. So gross. Oh, I brought something for you. Yeah. It's over here. Hold on. I brought you a No way. Dude. I haven't seen that either. <laughs> Right when I worked at Walgreens, man, people would buy the hell out of these. These are so gross. I felt really self-conscious buying that the other day, but I'll tell you why I bought it. Yeah. So if you go to McDonald's, I'm going to break some hearts right now. If you go to McDonald's and you get a large fries, that large fries contains the same amount of toxic chemicals, a set of toxic chemicals called aldehydes. One large fries contains the same amount of toxic aldehydes that are in 25 fucking cigarettes. No way. One large fries from McDonald's is in a lot of ways like smoking 25 Cigarettes. There's only 20 in that box. You wouldn't, I'm cheap. At, you wouldn't look at school though, eating the McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. But it's crazy, man. So we did a we did a piece of content at McDonald's just talking about how don't put it up there, by the way. Don't put it up shit. Get it out of there. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't put Marlboro Reds up there, bro. It's that not to interrupt, but I probably sound high, but it's like actually crazy that that it's legal to sell that product. Like I always under I didn't under like I grew up in a my mom smoked cigarettes inside the house. So like the walls are yellow, you know what I mean? My clothes smell like cigarettes. When I'd go to a friend's house, let's say a mom picked me up with a friend, they'd be like, oh, do you smoke? They think I'm smoking cigarettes because everything I have smells like cigarettes. And like, I just don't understand. Like I understand now really because I'm fucking, I, I'm like, I've learned more in life. It's like everything's about money. It's like, there's just, you know what I mean? Just It's just corruption, but it's like crazy that that that's sold in stores and shit. What's crazier? You have to be 18 to buy this. Yeah. You can give fries to your three-year-old. I know. And that, that is great. But that's the same, the same. And that's the same concept though. It's like more corruption there, you know, way I think, more corruption. I think it's, I think it's crazy. It's oh, cigarettes are horrible. And I think it's crazy that McDonald's French fries are legal when there's the same amount of this toxic chemical. Yeah, that's true. That's wild. Those. And these toxic chemicals are linked to cancers. They're, they're group 2A carcinogens from the WHO. When's the last time you had McDonald's fries? I mean, I touched McDonald's fries yesterday, but I haven't put them in my mouth and I don't even know, bro. 30 years. Hmm, that's wild. A long time. 30 years. Maybe <laughs> 30 years. I probably, I, I don't even think you were alive the last time I put McDonald's Dude, fries in my crazy. mouth, bro. So what do you, what are your thoughts on? Cause I do feel like a lot of people out there want to be healthy, but I feel like it, they make it seem kind of difficult or expensive. And also I feel like for me even like was a little tricky. Cause I was like, what, what the fuck is actually healthy? Cause I know like everyone's kind of like, they're like, fuck with your brain a little, like on like, they make this seem healthy when it's not, or even like peanut butter, they all hundred percent natural or like, you know, they, they do all that shit. So it's like, how, how do people kind of avoid that? Or you say, just stick to the meats and the, I guess, Oh, even that, okay. Even that, let's say I never met you and I go to the store. Like, how would I know what meat to get? Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Cause you can still buy shitty meats if the cow is eating bullshit, right? Yeah. But even shitty meats are better than okay. what you get at a, at a, at like, KFC I or McDonald's, right? Which I was eating a ton of KFC. Right. Or like Chick-fil-A or whatever. So the first step for people is how much fast food are you eating? 
how much junk food you, are you eating? And junk food, there's not a lot of junk food at, a, at most grocery stores, but there's some junk food. But there's most a ton. I mean, we we do this video grocery shopping with Danny Duncan. Oh yeah, and I would just be buying. Which, Who's that, Danny Duncan? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I was buying like cosmic brownies and fucking right. Swiss rolls and bread. You're right. You know what I mean, like all, all that shit, peanut butter and like ice cream fucking i mean that's all i would eat which it all tastes good you know but you know that stuff's bad for you i guess yeah and like my i got like three nieces now you know what i mean like and then it's not as bad on your for yourself i feel like it's worse when like like i wouldn't want to take my nieces to mcdonald's i'll do it for myself you know but why then, wouldn't you want to take them to mcdonald's exactly because it's horrible for them well you were asking me a lot of you stuff know what i'm saying like when, when you're yeah. if like my a little remy is four years old i don't want her eating like garbage when i know it's bad for her but you eat it exactly i'm just saying though it is i feel like it's easier for people to kind of do it to themselves but not it's like a parent smoking cigarettes like they'll do it themselves they don't want their kids smoking cigarettes right you know so i feel like that's one thing i've noticed where it's like i told you i told you my niece isabel is um lactose lactose intolerant mm -hmm. but i feel like it's just where i've also heard like someone who's lactose intolerant can go to europe and drink you know milk and shit and dairy whatever and they're fine their stomach's fine so it's like that's something i feel like i want to try where if i gave her like better foods and raw milk i want to see if it if it made her feel better I think it'd it be, would. It'd be interesting. Yeah, we were talk we can talk about lactose intolerance and then we'll talk go back to the food. Yeah. So we were talking about this yesterday in the grocery store. We did grocery shopping with Danny Duncan and Paul Saladino. It's probably much less entertaining than Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do a new one soon though. Okay. I'll make it entertaining. <laughs> it's much less entertaining than Don't think I fell off. Gro was <laughs> grocery shopping with just Danny Duncan. Yeah. There were no there were no aisles tipped over, there were no displays tipped not over yet. in this one, not yet. Um, but we were talking about the fact that I'm lactose intolerant historically, right? Mm -hmm. You can see this in your genetics if you have lactose intolerance gene. Lactose is a sugar in milk and a lot of us Westerners, a lot of us Northwesterners, right? So like European ancestry, um, lose the gene that makes lactase, which is the enzyme that breaks down lactose as we age. But what's interesting is that raw milk I can tolerate. So I don't get lactose intolerant symptoms with raw milk. Um, did this bother your stomach yesterday? You drank a lot of it. No, my stomach's fine. Yeah. I was chugging that shit. You were too. chugging it, dude. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm lactose intolerant, but like I just, like I said, growing up, I knew like they just put a bunch of bullshit in like the milk and the cheese. So I tried to avoid it just because I've, I've I also heard it makes you kind of congested and shit. I don't know if that's true, but I, I just wanted to try to not be congested. So that's, that's another reason I want to do this. Like I was getting sick every like three to four weeks. Um, which was a lot. I mean, it was fucking on my channel. There was a minute there where it was like literally every three or four weeks for like month after month after month. And I was like, dude, it was like hard. I didn't even like living really like that. So it was kind of difficult dealing with that. So I, I tried to be, I've been like making little changes in different areas of my life to try to like fix that. And I haven't really been, I had like a two day thing, like maybe a couple of weeks ago, but I just went to bed early, slept, knocked it away really quick. So, but I've been, I haven't been really getting sick in a while since maybe I mean, it hasn't been that long, but in December I got, it was the last time I got sick. I write it all down and I, I, I would love to see if I keep sleeping good and eating right and, you know, drinking the correct things. I think it will make a big difference. So. I think it's going to make a huge difference. Yeah, and, and, and I started working out. So yeah, yeah. You're getting swole, bro. Yeah, I know. And it's the hoodie, you know, you, you can tell though. <laughs> but the raw milk actually contains good bacteria that can change the bacteria in the gut and allow us to digest lactose. That's the end of that story. Cool. That, that raw milk is a lot more digestible for people. So this is circling back to something we talked about at the beginning of the podcast. RIP, you know, raw milk is bullshit, bro. Yeah. It's gonna, you're gonna get hurt. I've heard that this is bullshit from an Instagram DM. <laughs> That's what somebody said, right? Yeah, yeah. We should get that guy and text him back or send him a DM yeah, back. I'll but like <laughs> so many reasons that this is better for you, right? It's, it contains proteins that are in the native form. Like I mentioned at the beginning, associated with better asthma, eczema, and allergy in kids, more digestible. People who are lactose intolerant can actually tolerate this milk. It's a healthy food for humans. So that's interesting. And it's sort of a, it's, it's, it's a model of the fact that when you eat better foods that are less processed, you just, you do better as a human. End of story. Mm -hmm. Processed food tastes good, but a lot of this food tastes good too. I mean, that raw milk tastes good. A good steak tastes good. Yeah, a hamburger, yeah, yeah. not on a bullshit bun tastes good. There's raw cheese upstairs. I mean, people can see the video that we did of our grocery shopping trip and the kind of foods that we, you know, that you bought and the, the kind of stuff that you were selecting. But going back to what I was saying earlier, I just want to share this with people. So first step is get rid of the, the bullshit that you know is bullshit. Yeah. Like all the fast food or as much as you can. Sodas. Sodas, whatever. Um, pizzas, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, you know, in and out is 
one of the better ones. Dude, but, I love in and out But like, look, if you just get a burger patty at In-N-Out and you don't put anything on it or you just don't get the bun or you get it animal style. Protein style. No, right? animal, not animal style, protein style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for correcting me. Then then it's it's much better than a lot of other. Without the cheese. Yeah, because the cheese is American cheese. And you but can look at that. I would say too, a lot of people out there, like I don't even think they need to go like 100% all in. I think if you start making like the little adjustments, you kind of want to make more. Like exactly. You, you kind of want to go more. You on. get momentum. But, but you start to feel a little better. Exactly. And the snowball rolls. Yeah, exactly. Because like, when Lance Armstrong was here, he said with his life, he kind of sleeps on time, you know, wakes up early, works really hard 80% of the time. He does an 80, 20 roll and 20% he, he fucks off, which is what I'm kind of doing with my diet. Like I still want to, you know, get Starbucks and shit, but like totally. 80, 80% of the time, like I haven't, I haven't eaten any fucking Chick-fil-A, KFC, McDonald's, none of that shit for like, what month is it? Almost March now. So it's been over three months because I started like right in the end of December. Really? Yeah. So it's been almost three months. I haven't been eating any of that. And I don't even fucking really crave. I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't even crave Chick-fil-A, which I was eating Chick-fil-A. No joke, no exaggeration. Four times a day sometimes. That's crazy. Because I was trying to bulk up. Four times, like, dude, I, I have like DoorDash, like no joke, four times a day I'd get that shit delivered to me. Because um, I was like, just try to get like four or five meals in a day. And that, that was just like the quickest way. We're always, you know, doing shit. So I was just like doing that. And like, I mean, that's something I loved. I love Chick-fil-A. I mean, I promote it for free. I loved it that much. But it's just, I had seen a video, which I, I told you, I seen a video where a lady left it out for four months and it had no mold on it. No mold. And then I heard the chick, which I, this is me before. I thought Chick-fil-A was like a healthy version. This is like, it wasn't me being dumb. I just genuinely thought, I guess, uh, ignorance or naive, whatever. I just thought Chick-fil-A was like a healthy fast food. Like I actually didn't think it was that bad for you, but, um, so that's, that's why I was doing that. And then obviously, and then you realize you saw the video looking at how many ingredients are in the chicken. Yeah. I was like, you think it's that. just, you think I, it's pure chicken. That's what I the, thought. There's yeah. like 40 ingredients yeah. in the, in the and I heard chicken. that they had it on their site and someone made a video of it and then they got rid of it. They got rid of their shit too, which I don't know if that's true. I'm just saying that's another thing. And it's yeah. cooked in seed oils. Yeah. And that it's cooked in seed oils. The bun is full of seed oils, preservatives. It's just. But I know a lot of people out there, they don't get fucked up. Well, fuck it. It tastes good. I'm going to keep it, which is cool. You know, everyone, everyone's different. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But I think like, that's something I loved. And then now it's like, I'm eating like better and I'm feeling getting like, I'm slowly getting a little stronger and gaining weight and then I'm feeling good. And I don't even have a desire to eat Chick-fil-A, which is nice. That's kind of why I say like for most of the people out there, cause they're, most people won't give a fuck, but there's a lot of people that do want to make, you know, be the best they can be. Like, I know a lot of you guys out there, you're like Toyota Camrys is what I would say. Like this, I'm a fucking, this is a Ferrari basically, you know, <laughs> but I was like a Honda fit. So I'm making, I'm just, I just don't want to put that like 87 in my body no more, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you want to put super, this ain't even premium. This is like beyond that. You super know what I mean? premium, you're like bro. not even on the red. I don't even know what the fuck's up with you. I, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm way older than you, dude. I'm 46 years old. Dude, he doesn't, he don't use tooth. And I'll be honest, I got a crazy nose. He doesn't use toothpaste. <laughs> he doesn't use deodorant. He doesn't wash his hair and he doesn't even smell bad. And you just came from the gym. I could smell you a little, but not in a bad way. But um, I, I was wearing the same shirt that I was wearing. In yeah. The and I could smell your scent, but like, not like nothing bad, which is pretty crazy. I, I, like that's where, that's where I like, wouldn't do it. I don't really care. I just want to brush my teeth with, with toothpaste, but it's just crazy that you don't even smell bad because of how clean you eat, if that's true. It could be maybe genetics too, a little bit. I think it's genetics and the fact that I eat clean. We can talk about toothpaste also. I want to make sure we loop back to the food, but. Oh yeah, go back, just look, go to the food and then. And then we'll loop, go, we'll go to, toothpaste. to toothpaste. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, I was just, because you were asking a great question. How do people know it's healthy? We talked about that a little bit earlier, but I think if you if you cut out the junk food, if you cut out the fast food or you minimize it, right? Yeah. You can do 80, 20. And then you go to a grocery store, you shop along the outside of the grocery store, meaning you get vegetables if you want, fruit and meat, or some milk, if you can't find raw milk where you are, because a lot of states, raw milk is illegal to sell to consumers. Imagine that, the government hates you. Yeah. Um, you can get raw cheese, or, or there's farms where you can actually get raw milk. If you do those things in a grocery store, you're gonna be freaking healthier. And, and if you can't get raw milk, what, what's the next be best thing? Organic grass-fed milk or okay. organic milk. Yeah, but again, you may have problems with lactose intolerance I see. with a pasteurized milk. We got some cheese last night, Raw cheese, which is unpasteurized, unheated cheese, is available in most states. You can get that almost everywhere. You might have to go to a little bit nicer grocery store, um, but even I think Safeway probably has a raw cheese. Like a lot of times, even Safeways or like just regular quote grocery stores will have decent foods. I've seen definitely grass fed meat at Safeway, at Target, at Walmart yeah. now. Hold on, I don't want to interrupt. I got to piss. All right. Sorry. It's getting hot in this bitch, too. What about women? You, you, you I like eat, them. You eat pussy? <laughs> <laughs> of course, bro. Does it matter if the woman if the woman isn't uh, healthy or don't could you that think, somehow get into your? But don't you think I'm going to be off brand here for a moment? Don't you think that the pussy is going to taste different, like if the woman is eating healthy versus unhealthy? I don't know. 
Yeah. If you have a few people that I can test it out, on, <laughs> you let should, me know. <laughs> you should, uh, you should do some research and let me know, bro. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. But I mean, this is, I mean, R and D. I mean, I, I know this, you know, like not to be crass, but like, like the health, like humans, cause I want to come back to the to toothpaste also, but like humans smell differently when they're healthy versus mm. not healthy. Right. So even our like cum. Uh, absolutely. Would. Absolutely. Mm. Cause mine tastes pretty good. I'll be honest. Even <laughs> when I was eating McDonald's, <laughs> every guy out there's, t- you tried yours or ever? No. All right, maybe I'm the only one. You, have you ever tried it? Yeah, I feel like every guy's like, just like, just a little. I just want to make sure, you know, just see what's up. Just have you? Don't lie to me. Alex, have you? Come on. I feel like Alex never, he wouldn't even say he did if he did. I know he did one day in his life. He was like, <laughs> Josh, have you? <laughs> you never done it? I've done it. Okay, okay. Of course, I just want to make sure I'm not crazy. You're, you're, no, I feel like everyone's lying and shit. You're curious. I mean, you know, like. That don't make me gay, though. <laughs> but if you're gay, it's cool. I don't, I, cool. I got friends that are gay. It's cool, bro. No, but like, humans smell different. Our breath is different. The health of our mouth is different. When so we're I'm going to have to taste this every day. <laughs> you're to like, wow, it's tasting different. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. It's tasting different, bro. But like, this the, is. T- the title. Danny Duncan tastes his own cum every day <laughs> until it tastes better. <laughs> until it tastes better. It's true, man. So we talked about toothpaste. A, a lot of us want to use toothpaste because we're afraid that our breath is going to smell bad. But the breath smelling bad is not because you're not using toothpaste. It's because you have the wrong type of bacteria in your gut and your stomach. And that comes from junk food, right? Mm-hmm. So like the same thing kind of comes from BO and body odor. Like a, a really bad body odor can be related to unhealth in the human being and bad farts. We talked about farts and the smell of farts. You know that like the health of your Something's gut. Something's wrong with that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can tell like this is, and so of course that like, you know, if we're, you know, more respectful than what you said earlier, like the, the, the vaginal flora. I don't see, I don't know those words. I would be respectful yeah, like that and yeah. use those words. Sorry if I offended anyone. I'm not really sorry, it's, but it's if, a, I, <laughs> if I did, uh, I, if I knew those words that, you know, and went to 12 years or eight years of yeah. medical school, I would also use the, oh. cause it'd be funnier if I could use those words. Yeah. Yes. Danny, I think the vaginal flora could change if the woman's diet is different. <laughs> I wish I could say that. That's so funny. <laughs> you could just say it back to me, Paul, do you think the woman's vaginal flora could change if she has a different diet? Absolutely. Yeah, Danny. Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, Paul, do you think the woman's <laughs> vaginal flora could change if they have a different diet? Yes, absolutely. Danny. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Oh, that's class. So many ladies listening. Fix your diet. We probably got like ten percent women. Okay. Well, yeah. It was ten percent or so so a woman, this is actually a real question, no joke. If a girl there's a cause you know how some girls actually do like the, it just smells. That's actually could be from diet. Absolutely. Or, or it could be from just other things. Well, it can be from a variety of things, but it can definitely be from diet. And I would say there's a word called dysbiosis, which means the wrong bacteria in the wrong places. That's crazy. And you know, in medical school you look about you look at this stuff and you look at a lot of the a lot of the things that affect women's vaginas, the vulva, like the smell and, and the health of it have to do with different wrong or not wrong, but like different types of bacteria that are living there that are not always healthy and they can create funny smells and things like this. What types of foods could make a woman's vaginal flora s- smell, let's say bad? I think like junk food, right? Just like, anything, pro- anything processed? Yeah, yeah. A woman mm. that doesn't have a healthy gut or a healthy microbiome is a fancy word for all the bacteria living on our skin, uh, inside us, outside us. It's all continuous. We have, we're full of bacteria, trillions of bacteria. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. The food that you eat affects your microbiome and your microbiome inside of you, outside of you, on your skin. This affects the way you smell, your breath, all these things. What your farts smell like. It's funny because like, I, I remember like... What your poop looks like. Years ago, I remember meeting like certain people that were actually, they seemed like they were really healthy, but I feel like their breath smelled like ass. Maybe they weren't so healthy. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Like maybe they were just trying to be healthy, but they weren't doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that having bad breath is an indication that there's things you could fix about the gut and get better. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What were you guys asking when you went to pee? You asked about in and out fries. That's a great question. In and out fries are definitely, definitely cooked in seed oils also. Yeah. Both are bad, right? They're both bad. I mean, yeah. all the, all the fast food restaurants cook their fries in the same, in the same you seed oil. You know what's oil. crazy is when I go to in and out I get, the, I get the fries with the cheese just layered on top. Oh that God. shit's so good. <laughs> but I'm going to do that here and there. Not too much. 20% of the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And 20%, if you think about it, it's really, that's like almost one, I can do that once a week. You could definitely do that. You could definitely do that once a week, as long as you're honest with yourself yeah. and you're solid the rest I of the really, time. I'm really not even craving it. I love dessert, so I love like... Like I'm still going to eat my ice cream, my Froyo. Like I love that shit, but. But there's, there's better ice creams out there. I showed you an ice cream when you were mm-hmm. at my house that had milk and cream and eggs and honey. That's, yeah. I mean, there's, I've made ice cream on my channel and show people, this is how you make a healthy ice cream. I, I've eaten ice cream, you know, like 
I you got some of this raw cream from yeah, this, this farm. Yeah, this shit is feels this feels like honestly like a I mean, I like smoothies too, which are healthy. You know, you can make, you can can make a healthy great. smoothie. I love yeah, smoothies. Just don't, in my opinion, don't put spinach in your smoothie. That's no, you know, I like the f- more fruit f- smoothies, like f- bananas fruit, and shit, fruit and bananas or some raw milk, strawberry bananas. Good. Yeah, that's great. Those things are super healthy for humans. Um, Not a problem at all. One, oh, one thing I wanted to kind of, I just feel like a lot of people out there is like, I feel like these things kind of could be a turnoff if you wanted to go all in on it, like all in hypothetically, maybe 80%. They seem kind of like a turnoff because like, I feel like most people don't want to live their life where it's like. Oh, uh, excuse me. Does your restaurant cook in seed oil? That's me, bro. But no one wants to like. No, everyone out there is probably like, dude, just order the fucking food, right? Like, but I feel like you can ask still, and it's probably not that big of a deal. But there, there are still things like you were telling me if you go out to eat, like because people maybe play baseball and they got to go on a team dinner, or people have to go to a family fucking graduation. They they don't want to be like. Mm, can I, they don't want to be that guy, you know. It can Wait. either that can either be the twenty percent, yeah, or you can just get a steak. Exactly, you were saying <clears throat> steaks and what else, or is that the only, or hamburger maybe? Was yeah, if hamburger? you get a hamburger, I mean, then you're going to be the guy that gets the hamburger without the bun. But now it's cool if you get you protein just cut it style. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah just cut you it can up. get a hamburger without the bun. Most of the time, when when places cook hamburgers, they're not cooking the hamburgers in seed oils. Every once in a while, they do, but you know, luck of the draw. Most steaks are not cooked in seed oils if you go to a restaurant. So if you go on a date with a girl and you don't want to be that guy who's like. Mm, which is basically me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, do you cook in seed oils? Uh, you just say, "I'll have a steak," and and get that. I guess it's okay. Get though, that thing if, medium if, rare. If you say, "I don't want to be that guy," but <laughs> no, you can't you say that, bro. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> you can't say that. What you do is you go on the date and you're like, "Have you ever heard of this guy, Paul Saladino?" Yeah, and yeah. if they say no, you don't ask about seed oils. Okay. But okay. if they do, then you ask about seed oils. Yeah, I've chicks, heard of him either. And the chicks, <laughs> I've never heard of that. But never heard of that guy. If the chick hasn't heard of me, then don't ask about seed oils. If she has, you might get points. For, she'd be like, "Wow, you really you're into health, aren't you?" And you're like, "Yeah, I am." And then if she, she knows you, her vagina definitely smells good. Good chance. Yeah. I didn't say it, but yeah, yeah, most likely. Increased probability of. Uh, you know, commensal vaginal flora being uh, favorable. And if she doesn't know you, her vaginal flora is <laughs> Who knows? not it. I, uh, questionable vaginal flora. You should do a book on that. <laughs> vaginal flora? Yeah. I, I might. Maybe that's my next book. Mm. So what do we got here? This is, uh, so one of the cool things about doing what I do is getting to build businesses that help people. So the first business I built was the desiccated organs. I sent you some of those with testicle, the testicle pills. Yeah. yeah. Oh, should, we should have grabbed those. Yeah, those are upstairs too. Somebody want to grab those? those? Yeah. Dang it, man. I fucked up my display. And I like joint, asking the question. Both. You know where they are, Martin? They're on my health shelf. In the cabinet? Yeah. Both bottles. I got six things in there. I like you, asking the questions when I know the answer. Uh-huh. This is good. This is like a John question. That's what John will do. He'll be like, so tell me about your, uh, <laughs> your, your new product. He, he already researched for like <laughs> 15 hours. You, uh, you tore your labrum, Danny, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something uh, unfortunate happened in one of your videos. So bad. One of your uh, controversial videos. And I sent you basically some capsules with collagen right? Scapula and cartilage uh, from cows and then some liver in the capsules. And then I sent you a capsule with testicle in it. I should take, I haven't taken them today. I took them yesterday. And you did not understand how valuable the testicle you capsules were. And uh, you sent me a great photo so of yeah, you. Yeah, these with are the, whole, the whole package, pack. regenerative, small batch. Yeah. Grass fed, mm. grass finished organs. So whole package and joint strength and repair. Yeah. So this would be good for my torn labrum. That would be good for your slightly torn labrum. So this is for a 30 day supply. That's a 30 day supply. Cause you take six capsules a day. I and might as this, well take them now, right? You might as well take all of it in both right now. All right. But this one, the whole package is interesting because it has testicle and all of our supplements are hard in soil. This is going to sound like an ad, but it's not meant to be an ad. They're tested. I like inf- ads. They're like informed sports, right? So they're tested like NSF for purity. And the only one that failed is whole package because it actually contains testosterone. And it's not testosterone that we add. Mm -hmm. It's naturally occurring in testicles. So if you're listening to this and you're an Olympic athlete, maybe don't take whole package. Uh, But if you're not uh, an Olympic athlete and you're you're interested, you can have some of my milk. If you're not an athlete and you want more testicle or testosterone that occurs in testicle. We get all six at once? Yeah. You do that? Yeah. We did a contest one time. I think I swallowed like 27 or 30 pills at once. You'd do well in West Hollywood. <laughs> Man, I probably would, bro. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that well here. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. <laughs> but then the second company I built, this is a new thing. This is really cool. We've been talking a lot about how... Well, let's talk about this more. Oh, yeah, yeah. When, so when about... did you start this? So this was about three and a half years ago. Why is this still in here? I took him yesterday. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody I hope I didn't back. take 12 of that one. 
I might have <laughs> <laughs> extra, 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 extra testicle pills, bro. Extra Maybe I testicle just put pills. it back in because I was lazy. Extra testicle pills. So the, I built this one because I knew that, like my friends, my family, my sister has a as a son and daughter. My parents they exactly. wouldn't eat, they wouldn't eat fresh liver, but you can put this in capsules and people will take yeah, it. Yeah, this doesn't taste bad at all. So you, what year did you say you started this? Three and a half years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. How how long did it take you to kind of get it ready to go? I mean, it's hard to find the supply chain. This is sourced from New Zealand. It's all the businesses are tricky to build. Hmm. Yeah. And so it's been great. I mean, we have all kinds of different supplements. We have a gut supplement. With I'm going like, to need more of your milk. All right. Now, are you allowed to talk numbers on this or not? not? Is it better to keep it private? Probably better to keep it private. I mean, Why is that? I mean, Dude, you don't, you don't like my milk I made? I made that. <laughs> it's does great, man. I think that the numbers, I mean, this is going to sound cheesy, but I think it's true. The numbers are just representative of the, the number of people that are benefiting and finding value in the supplement. Mm -hmm. So. That's good. I mean, it's how many thriving. people found value. In I your think we have a uh, company last year. I think that like, <laughs> I, I think that on the website, if you look on the website, we have like some, like we probably have over a hundred thousand customers at this point. I know Elon is outside delivering your cyber truck, but I think he said, uh, you get paid in proportion to the complexity of the problems that you solve. So, you know what I think about Elon stealing my horn ideas? <laughs> is he far on every podcast? Let's see if it smells. Though. <laughs> We're going to do some uh, examination. What do you think of that? Uh, let's see. I'm good right now. Put my head nah, this way. It's still something there. <laughs> it's still something. It takes time for your gut floor. I don't know to what fix. the fuck that is though. So I think it's I don't it's not think it's horrible though. No, but I don't think it's bad to I don't think it's bad to create products that are healthy for people, that help people lead better lives and to make a living. And that allows me to do this free content for people. Exactly. I I, I like just making stuff that I personally use and and uh like I, I never want to promote something that I don't agree with. I feel the same way. And then this I feel like Oprah right now. You tried these. You're like coming on my what talk do you think show. About do you want to try one on the podcast? I, I will, yeah, if yeah, you want. Rip I it will. open, bro. Um, put a stick in your mouth. Put a meat stick in your mouth, Danny Duncan. How many of these did you say you put in your mouth at like once? 27, I think. 27. And how many meat sticks did you do? I never tried. Let's try. You try. You tell Let's me. Try. You're the one who's good at sticking 27. <laughs> pills. I'm having trouble with six. So this is made with 100% grass fed beef and organs. Yeah, 100% grass fed How'd beef and organs. How'd you come up with the name lineage? It's like, it's like, this idea of where we've come from as humans is interesting. And that's what the word lineage means. What's your lineage? Where have we come from as humans? What are the foods that are the most sought after by humans that are the most prized? It's meat and organs. So mm. the cool thing about this beef stick, this is intentional. Just like we've talked about when you design things in the world, I, I think we both appreciate intentionality there. Yeah. It's grass fed, grass finished. It's, it's air dried. So we put it in a 78 degree drying room for five days. Most of the beef sticks you find, all, all the beef sticks you find in grocery stores or gas stations are cooked. It's crazy. I, lo I used to, to love have. like beef jerky and Slim Jim as a kid. And then now... Like, a lot of preservatives, dude. They're so fucking nasty. Like that greasy shit. Like a lot of preservatives. I don't really like. I don't really like. I can eat beef jerky sometimes, but like, you kind of open it up on an airplane. It just smells like ass. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I can't eat. It's this the beef shit. jerky. I didn't fart. Yeah, yeah. No, the beef jerky <laughs> smells like just shit sometimes. It's not good. Yeah. There's a lot of preservatives, but because we air dry this, there's no celery powder. There's no nitrites. No lactic acid. It's just meat, organs, vinegar, salt, and a collagen casing. Check it out. Hmm. Rip it open, bro. U.S. inspected and passed by Department of Agriculture. Yeah, you gotta you gotta play ball the with the packaging you. is nice. So I like this. You gotta play ball with the USDA. My my uh, energy shot matador. The yeah. name means uh, well in Spanish I think it means like killer, uh -huh. but the matador is like the thing that kills the bull. So I matador. Like, I like the name a lot. Matador. We did running of the bulls. I know you told me I'm gonna. And that was how. Then after I came up with the name, and I, I was might like, uh, I might come do that with you soon. You want to do it? I might. You I should. See it. Don't be a bitch. I'm not going to be a bitch, Come bro. Come and promote these at the fucking Running of the Bulls. Running of the Bulls. What better place to promote this thing that has a bull? What is that thing? It's probably a bull. That's Something. definitely a bull. It has some bull-looking bull animal than yeah. Running of the Bulls. Yeah. Give these out. You should be running. You should have this. Throw them out. No, you should be running at Meat Running sticks. of the Bulls. Meat sticks. Running of the Bulls, you should be running with this and then eating it like while you run. You know? Tell me that's not the best meat stick you ever had, Danny Duncan. Tell me that's not the best piece of meat well, you ever put healthy, in your mouth. Which makes it better. Yeah. Is that the best piece of meat you ever put in your mouth? No, no I saw Dick one time like three years ago. <laughs> Imagine. No, okay. It was good. You guys have tried this, right? I feel like sometimes I... You didn't try? Come get one here. Oh. So what, what's this the thing that wraps around it? Collagen casing. Collagen casing. Mm -hmm. so collagen is connective tissue. It's kind of what athletes and people take that want to have stronger bones and ligaments and we wrap the meat in the collagen it's from beef so you make the collagen from the beef from like the skin and then you put the beef in the collagen casing and that's how you dry it but super proud of that because that took a while to make a long time two years 
Mm -hmm. 54 different taste trials to get like this texture and taste and everything. It's Were really you getting upset in the beginning of how bad it tasted? Fuck yeah. Because when I did Matador, I was like getting really pissed off because it took me, July 2021 is when we started. Mm -hmm. I went through so many tastings. I was getting pissed. I remember the one time we did the tasting and I was just sitting in the car at the end of it. I was just annoyed as fuck. Because like, I know it's like, mine's an energy shot. So it's not like a Red Bull or Monster. But it's like easier to make those taste good because they're like, obviously like 12 ounces, 16 mm -hmm. ounces, whatever. Mine's just like condensed into two ounces. So it really can't like taste completely like shit. Like five hour energy tastes like ass, you know? So I was getting pissed off with that shit. It made me, it made me really mad. But now we have a really great product. that's really healthy for you too. <laughs> no, I'm We're going to make it healthier. <laughs> <laughs> but no. So yeah. Tell me about that. Like what was it like? Like doing all the tastings and shit like we, we, on, and your lows, like when you're getting mad and stuff. It's frustrating because in order to build a product like this, you have to spend thousands of dollars wasted on trials. Yeah. They just, throw away or, you know, compost. So you just, you're trying to figure it out, working with manufacturers. I think eventually we'll just build our own manufacturing and take it in house, but we're working with manufacturers. We have to know every step of their process. I mean, this is a technical thing. It doesn't look like much, but a meat stick is a lot more like rocket science than you think. Like the fill, the meat that comes in has to be high quality. The organs have to be high quality and fresh. The way it's cut has to be a certain way. The way it's dried, how much meat goes into the casing, how long it's dried, at what temperature. It's super technical. What is your plans with this company and this company then like in the future? I think just helping more people understand that, I mean, the, the ideal thing that I want for people is to eat fresh meat, fresh organs, but if they can't get fresh meat or fresh organs, if you won't eat organs, then a capsule can be helpful for you. Maybe this helps people. If you're on the go and you need good food that's convenient, the lineage sticks. We're going to do a lot with this company. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a lot of different food with this company. We're going to make a beef tallow. We're going to make a protein powder. That's super good. And no protein bullshit. powder would be sick mm -hmm. because I'm super, I'm super picky about protein powders. Mm -hmm. I, there's not many on the market that I would eat. Is there so, one you could recommend right now? Uh -uh. Really? There's not even anything that I would eat right now because I don't like fillers. I don't like anti caking agents. Like I, don't I was like, reading, we were reading the, the mass gainer thing and it, it was like, I just stopped using it and I am gaining weight without it, but I had used mass gainer at one point. It was like 1340. It's like a GNC one, mm -hmm. but that shit would just fuck my stomach up, dude. It was just, but I was like, Oh, I need to gain weight. And I would just chug it. But I mean, I'm seeing success right now, just eating better and, and working out hard. And like, I'm gaining like not a pound a day, but honestly close to that's incredible. half a pound, half a pound a day, probably a little well, Let's more talk about that. that because I'm sure there's a lot of guys or girls watching this who want to gain weight, who want to get more muscle. There's a real simple formula here, which is getting enough calories getting enough carbohydrates, but not getting those carbohydrates and calories from junk food. Yeah. And then getting enough high quality protein, getting enough meat, getting enough good quality meat. That's the formula. So that's the formula I was talking to you about. You want to gain weight. You've got to get enough calories. Mass gainer of 17,000 from GNC is not the way to do it. There's a bunch of jerk, a bunch of bullshit in there. It would make me feel like shit. Like not only, it was just one of those things where I would just push myself like, if you want to gain weight, just fucking do it, pussy. And just I would eat more just, food. I would just make myself chug it. And then, but then afterwards I'm like done. I'm just like, Oh, like just, you're just out for the count. Like I couldn't do anything else. I was just fucked. But I would say that's one of the things I, I think a lot of people out here like play sports probably watching and they definitely want to get bigger and stronger. Um, but yeah, if I had advice, I mean, cause it, I'm probably, I would definitely say on like the higher percentile of people that are like struggle with gaining weight. I mean, my genetics got to be like, I mean, it's like impossible to gain weight, but it's not impossible. But it's very, very hard for me to gain weight and, and keep it. Mm -hmm. I think my mom, you know, my mom's genetics are just like, and my legs are a little thick because my dad's got like, you know, just thick ass legs, but mm -hmm. the, I don't even fucking need to work out my legs really like I do, but I haven't, I didn't walk the whole fucking month of January, you know, and they didn't even, it was the same. So would you just say like, I guess that I would say a lot of people probably like for me, it's easy because I could just be like, I got a chef bringing me fucking food every day. It's like high end. But like for a lot of people out there, like when I was in high school, I obviously couldn't do that or even right out of high school, I couldn't do that. So would you just say like, just grab a fucking grill would probably be the easiest way. If and you have a chicken grill and steak. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get a grill. You don't have a grill yet. But no, I don't even have that. It's yeah, coming. But that's not even, that's not an expensive thing to do. Right. I mean, a grill is a great investment. You, it's, it's hard to cook meat in your house sometimes because it smokes up the kitchen. You set off the fire alarm. I can't even tell you. I'm I don't like cooking <clears throat> chicken in, or uh, I don't really want to meat, cook meat inside my house. It's not great for inside the house. It's great for the grill. The grill tastes better. Getting a grill at your house or whatever your apartment complex, you can even get these yeah. little hibachis that go on your deck. I mean, that's going to make it much easier to cook meat and getting, getting enough good quality meat. How much is enough? I think one gram of protein per pound of body weight is, is what you really need if you want to gain muscle mass. So one gram of protein, easy calculation is that one pound of meat 
has about 100 grams of protein. Okay. So you weigh, we don't have to tell people how much you weigh now, but you're gaining weight. Yeah. Um, what's your goal weight? 225? I want to be 260, <laughs> Bradley. No. Uh, no, I want to be like, I think 175. Okay. Uh, would be would be fine. I, did, I might look, I, I want to see where I, what I look like at 175. You would look jacked at 175. Yeah, I think I would look pretty jacked. So like right now, this is, um, I'm 155 right now. Mm -hmm. So one... 160 162 is or 162 is the most i ever weighed mm -hmm. and then right now i'm 155 so i'm trying to get to and 162 i looked really good honestly i want to be but i want to be like i think 175 would look good so say 170 175 that's your goal weight that means you want to get at least uh, uh, right around 170 grams of protein per day okay so that's 1.7 gram 1.7 pounds of meat per day yeah so almost two pounds not full two pounds of meat but that's a lot of meat man mm -hmm one and three quarters pounds of meat per day. So that means really, I mean, you, but you don't only get protein from meat, you're getting protein from the milk, but you need to think like, if you really want to encourage muscle growth, you're going to need to eat meat at every single meal. And this is again, why it's so important. I feel like to talk about this because meat can be healthy, especially the sourcing is good. But I've said this to you before, and I think people don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Like if you, if you can only afford regular meat from target that's great that's much better than what you're going to get grass-fed should always yeah right? if you can't if you can't always afford grass-fed it's okay and it's still better than mcdonald's it's better than mcdonald's yeah. better than chick-fil-a which has 40 ingredients in their chicken patty yeah. it's not even real chicken but it's all the other thing i want to tell people is that there are some fast food restaurants like in and out we talked about 100 percent beef patties yeah not cooked in seed oils i've been there i've asked them mcdonald's doesn't cook their quarter pound beef patty in seed oils and it's 100 percent beef so if you're in a pinch you can just eat McDonald's beef patties and it's going to be way better than a Chick-fil-A yeah. piece of chicken that's 40 ingredients and a bunch of other processed bullshit. So, but getting that amount of protein, one gram of protein per pound of goal body weight, that's critical for gaining muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be thinking when you get up in the morning, where am I getting my protein? Snack, where's my protein? Lunch, where's my protein? And and if you Well, it's are, easy for me because I just eat lineage meat sticks. Right, wow. <laughs> nah, <man. laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> but and this is interesting though. So I'm proud of this fact. One package... 64 grams of protein in one package. Oh, if you eat the whole thing. If you eat the whole day. thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's 64 grams of protein. This is where protein powders come in for people. And again, it made me think, a lot of people use protein powders. I would rather people eat a steak, but there's a time and a place for protein powders, and there's not a whole lot of protein powders. I don't think there's any, like I said, that I'm really stoked about on the market. So Lineage will be making one really soon, and it won't have any garbage. So no fillers, no anti-caking agents, no artificial sweeteners. It's going to be tricky because yeah. the reason protein powders taste good is because they have artificial sweeteners that I'm not a huge fan of. So we're going to make a protein powder that basically the goal is going to be to add it to milk and then add your own honey or good sweetener, not an artificial bullshit. But our, our first protein powder is your own honey too. Yeah. You should make your own market at some point. We're going to, we're going to sell honey Shit. because a lot of honey is contaminated with pesticides. And so we're going to do a glyph. But not the one I got yesterday. That I specifically got that one for you because it wasn't, it's doesn't I have a pesticide. I specifically got you that one because it does have pesticides. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was showing you, you know, that, that's the whole point of going, showing you like a good honey to get. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to do a tallow, which is the beef fat. We're going to do all kinds of good stuff. And do you feel at some point when this company is so big and you're making so much money that the government is going to come and try and kill you? I did not commit suicide. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, man. I hope not. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I live in Costa Rica. Or maybe I don't. I wouldn't tell them where you live. I know. <laughs> They're going to find you. <laughs> it's yeah. hard. I live Puerto in Rico. Puerto Rico or Puerto Rica. Or I live in Puerto Rico. Coast, Costa Porta. <laughs> um, well, uh, Porta another thing Porta I want to talk Costa. about real quick. Uh, is floss bad? Floss is great. I noticed you use a certain type of toothbrush with no toothpaste. I don't use toothpaste. We talked about that earlier. Yeah, yeah. What was the toothbrush though? Bristles? Uh, the tooth <laughs> Like this. The toothbrush bristles. Toothbrush bristles are boar's hair. Because I don't like the plastic bristles on my toothbrush, but that's pretty granular. Yeah, yeah, that's don't have to worry about that. We went to your your Airbnb, and I was like looking at your Wi-Fi router, and you had some fucking sleep. Oh, thing over bro, it. we can't. <laughs> All right, so this is. This can we is talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about it. People yeah. don't have to do this, but no, we they know okay, everyone out there. You, you do whatever the fuck you want. We don't care what you do. I don't I don't give a fuck. I just, you know, I, We're figured, just putting, I, I just figured if I learn some shit, I'm going to pass it on to the motherfuckers fair. that made me rich fair. and made me all my dreams come true. I'm going to tell them everything I know, you know? And I they can feel take, like that's right. I'd rather do that than sell you a fucking NFT or make a coin and get you to buy it. Fair. This is just my thoughts. And you you can tell me to fuck up. You can you take do, it or leave it. Do whatever you want. It doesn't you matter. You take it or leave it. But, but I mean, this is relevant for AirPods. This is a conversation. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is what's crazy. Is yeah, like, well, it's conversation about ahead, EMFs. Yeah, yeah, ahead, it's a conversation about EMFs. I didn't mean to cut you off, go but ahead. I think I know where you're going. Cut me off. Uh, cut you off. So 
Basically, oh, wait, wait, wait. before we get into that, all right, how many e sticks can you stick in your mouth? <laughs> uh, 17. Do you want to try it though? No, I'm good right now. That would get clipped. I think it'd go pretty viral. <laughs> you should probably try it. Let's see. I mean, we can. This is a different type of podcast, you know. Right, this is good go. for you. I think. We gotta open all of it. No. You think it's bad? We're gonna do Who's it. Your, who's this? Your fucking brand? Who's this? Your agent? We're gonna do it. Who is this guy? I'm not gonna eat him. I'm just gonna put him. Who is this guy, man? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were my team, dude. Look at him, dude. Shake his head. Film two, this guy, dude. <laughs> Four, five, six. Dude, do the whole bag, man. Let's do the whole bag. Yeah, yeah. And I, you can put them back in. I'll eat them at some point. Right, it doesn't bother me. I'm put them all in no one got a cleaner like mouth than you. Look at that gut. This is the cleanest gut in America. Is that the whole bag? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think I put that in my mouth. I don't know. You got to get them all in there. <laughs> all right, all right. This is like the, what's that chubby bunny challenge? What's that called with the marshmallows? There he is. Hold on. Lineage me. This is the best. This is, a, <laughs> this is the most viral ad you guys will ever get. All right. Martin's like, get the, put the, put the, you're wearing a Gym Shark shirt, dude. Come on. You're talking about fucking like meat sticks. This is like, uh, we were in the, <clears throat> I'm going to put these back and you can have them later. Like, I will eat them. I, I'm going to, cause I'm going to forget you even put them in your mouth to be honest. I licked them. We were in the, uh, we were in the Lazy Acres grocery store last night and Danny sees a honey and he, he, he opens it in the grocery store and licks it. And then he decides to get a bigger size. And well, you like, said get the big one. I know. And then you put mine back. <laughs> and I, was like, yeah. and I was like, oh, you just put that one back. I forgot that you licked it. Yeah. And you were like, no, no, I got to buy it. I licked it. And I thought, oh, shit, I forgot about Could that. Could you imagine we left that? Yeah, yeah, that would have been bad. Some I mean, rich some, person. Somebody would have gotten a special thing. So, yeah, there's a special bag of lineage meat sticks here with Paul Saladino's saliva on it for Danny Duncan. We'll auction that one off. All right, cool. We'll auction that one off. Special for you guys. That's crazy. So, back to the Wi Fi router and EMS. AirPods. Yeah, AirPods. If you EMF is like electromagnetic field, it's real. It's not woo woo. It's not hippie shit. You can think about like there are electrical magnetic fields that we live in, and it's like being on a like a flat calm lake versus an ocean with tons of waves, right? So if you're in a bunch of EMF, if you're around a bunch of electromagnetic fields, it's like being in an ocean with huge waves. It's kind of stressful for your body. Really, this is why you don't leave your phone on next to your head while you're sleeping. And so there's meters that you can use that that measure electromagnetic fields. And I had this meter and you, you know, you look at a Wi-Fi router, it, it really goes off the charts when you put it near a Wi-Fi router. So you can get a Faraday bag on Amazon for 20 bucks and it's a bag, it's a metal bag you can put around the Wi-Fi router that kind of mitigates the EMFs coming off the router. You can still use the Wi-Fi, it's just a, less of a signal. So it's less waves creating stress in the human body. Not a lot of people think about this, but it's interesting because if you actually put your AirPods up to one of these EMF meters, they go pretty bonkers. And it's on the order of what's outside your microwave. Do you ever have a microwave when you were a kid? Yeah, it's in, uh, we always talk about this. I fucking hate microwaves. I don't have a microwave in I my hate, house. I hate them too. But AirPods are basically like having two little microwaves. It's on the order of a fucking microwave. Like, that's crazy. If you're outside, like if you put your face next to a microwave, that's pretty close to what is coming out of your AirPods in your ear through your head. And you're wearing them for six hours a day or three hours a day when you're studying. Mm -hmm. You basically have two little microwaves strapped to your head. The people watching this video with the AirPods in right now, yes. they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, get it. Get in the, I can't do anything. Get, get in the EMF meter and you'll see what's going on here. Like, So, it's so what would be, crazy. if you just did like the wired AirPods? The wired Air headphones? Obviously they're not AirPods, but yeah, wired yeah, headphones. Yeah, it's, it's, it's much less. Oh, but there still is there. There's still a little bit there, but it's much less. You have to put your phone completely on airplane mode. So we were talking about this also. Yeah. Um, and I was talking to one of my friends who was on TRT. He was on testosterone replacement which basically kind of puts your testicles into hibernation. When Mine you, are in there right now. No, they're not, bro. Oh, uh, I thought it was, what'd you say? Hibernation. No, no, no. Not no. like, yeah, at yeah. Least at least it's hypernation. No, 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 not hibernation, hibernation. I was like, yeah, mine are hyper. No, <laughs> so I've heard. So uh, the, the TRT puts your testicles into hibernation. He wants to have a baby with his wife now, and his testicles aren't making enough sperm. And so I was telling him, get your cell phone out of your front pocket because... There's studies on human sperm where they'll take human sperm in a Petri dish. I guess somebody like, you know, they gave them sperm. Yeah, I did. Um, that was me. Yeah, it could have been. Me, they, they gave me 150 bucks. They, they took Danny Duncan's sperm. They put it in a Petri dish with a cell phone. And then they just have a similarly uh, like temperature sperm over here with no cell phone. And the sperm right by the cell phone don't move around in the same way. They're actually impaired in their motility and they have more DNA breaks. So the DNA in the sperm is damaged. That's crazy. So there's interesting studies that show that if you have your cell phone in your front pocket, fully on there's a bunch of emf coming out i could put a wi-fi meter and show you how much but it's it's probably bad for the sperm that are in your wait, testicles wait, if i came in a petri dish you can put the emf meter and tell me how much i could i could get emf from your sperm no we'd have to put a phone on it oh right? uh, from the phone yeah yeah i see but if you had so a cell phone in your back pocket 
I just put it on airplane mode if you're not using it. Okay. And we can show but people you, how to. And you said real quick, the uh, the airplane mode, you have to. Like that won't just do it, right? That actually just did it because you've done it in your settings. If everything is gray, so if the Wi-Fi signal, the Bluetooth signal, and the cell signal are, are gray like that, they're off. Okay. But if they're but white, then you said like if you did Bluetooth, that won't do it. That, right? That's not off. Right now it's yeah. white. It's not off, and you can hit the Wi-Fi. See, it's white. They're not off, and now hit the airplane mode. Okay, uh, it all goes off. Right? Okay. But a lot of people have settings so on their phone. I can phone. pull this up to my head, and I'm good. There's no EMF coming off your phone right now. You could put it in your pants. Huh? Yeah. You could sleep because you could sleep next to Stephon's it. Stefan's going to be calling me. What the fuck's going on? Yeah. But I mean, if you need your phone and it needs to be on, put it away from you. If you're sleeping, you don't need to answer your phone while you're sleeping. Make sure it's on airplane mode. Get it away from you. How far away would you have it? I, I turn it off completely. It's on and my phone is on airplane mode and it's feet away from me. I break sleeping. it every night before I you just back. destroy it. <laughs> you just bury it in the backyard. You just dig it up every night, Dang. bury, rebury in the backyard. But I mean, look, if, if you're not having a problem, maybe it's not a big deal, but for people who don't have fatigue or maybe have headaches or don't sleep well or have anxiety or mental health issues, or they don't have testosterone that's as, low, as high as they want, like wearing your phone on your, you know, in your front pocket, sleeping with your phone next to your head. This is, these are all harmful for humans. And I think we're going to realize this more and more. Yeah. We were driving to the grocery store yesterday in your Tesla with the biggest bullhorns I've ever seen. I was so afraid you were going to clip another car in Los Angeles. It was going to be Florida. Uh, Florida. Not imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. We're in Puerto Rico. Right we're now. in Puerto Costa right now. Cause I'm trying um, to avoid paying taxes. So I, I moved my everything to Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's everything. what's up. But we were driving in your Tesla in Florida in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico <laughs> last night and uh and you were talking about this and we were just talking about how um cigarettes you know, right cigarettes yeah, yeah. No, we were not talking about cigarettes what uh, were we talking about there's something else you were telling me in the car oh well I was saying like you were talking about the EMFs and I was like this fucking Tesla's got to be off the charts and we're just riding around in it the right? Tesla like, does have a lot of EMFs in it but there's something I'll think of in a second I got well distracted. then we were talking about you were talking you told me your, your father was a doctor mm -hmm. and you said he smoked cigarettes in the office and that was just completely normal yeah, yeah I mean when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, I mean, I was born in 1977, which is ancient, I know you guys, but um, I'm living. And uh, in the 1980s, my dad was a doctor and in the office, they could smoke cigarettes. It was crazy. Yeah, so everywhere, you get in restaurants, airplanes, you could even- It used smoke. to be that way, yeah. yeah. But then now I look at now and, and you look, thinking back, it's like, oh, those fucking idiots were just smoking on the plane. Yeah. But then I feel like in like 50 years from now, they'd be like, those idiots put phones up to their heads? Yeah, those idiots put, <laughs> yeah, this is exactly what I was thinking. This is what yeah. I wanted to tell you that like, what are we going to realize in 30 years that we're doing now that's harmful for us? That's creating anxiety that we don't yeah. even know where it's coming from or depression or insomnia or- Low libido or low, low hormones. When, when do you think the last time you slipped up? 30 years? It's been a long time. And it's just, I was telling you this at dinner. I'm just wired a little different. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've all got our things. Uh, this makes it hard for me to connect with people sometimes. It makes me, you know, I'm the goofy guy at the restaurant asking about seed oils. But I don't, I mean, I, I don't want to say this because then people are going to be like, I can't even believe that guy said that. I don't think I've had pizza in 20 years, man. Yeah. I don't think I've had a cookie in 20 years and I'm fine with that. I don't miss it because I feel good. I'd rather yeah. feel good, but that's just me. You don't have to be as intense as me. I just hope the information is valuable for people and helps people make one or two positive changes. Yeah. That's yeah. great. It's okay. You don't have to be like critical like that. Me? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be like, not, oh, cri yeah, not yeah. critical of me, but you don't have to be critically like intense. No, I love it. I mean, we need people like you. I think you, you need, uh, you need the freaks. Yeah. You have yeah. to have it and all yeah. and everything. Yeah. Running and swimming. Whatever, yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm afraid of that. I'm not afraid of that. I'm, I'm proud of it. You like Goggins, David Goggins. He's intense. He's like the you of running. I feel like, or something working out. I'm sure that David Goggins and I have similar mindset in a lot of things. Have you had him on the podcast? No. Nah. Goggins hasn't sat on this couch. I would, I would never allow him to sit there. No, why not? I just don't like him that much. You don't like Goggins? No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> no, I love Goggins. Uh, he's, I don't know. He probably don't give a, I just feel like he don't give a fuck about anything. He's intense. Yeah, he does not. I don't think he wants to come on. The, I mean, look at this shit, dude. Uh, I think Goggins may come on your podcast. Who knows? But I think that like, if you think about David Goggins, what he's doing inspires people and shows people that like they can be better than the way they are. Exactly. I don't think most people look at David Goggins and the way that he lives his life and think, I'm going to run 40 miles a day. They just think, yeah, yeah, it's like, exactly. yeah, they just think I need to do something. I'm going to do a little bit more yeah. than I do now. And uh, man, if what I do 
is is that for people in terms of food, then that's freaking amazing. Exactly. I, Just I a hope, little bit. I hope that I could be one percent of that. Like David, mm -hmm. I, I hope I could be one percent as, as inspirational as David Goggins with regard to food. And if people improve just a little bit and they start on the path like you said it snowballs you feel a little better and you're like oh man actually i don't really need to eat mcdonald's that much or i don't really need to eat chick-fil-a that much and then you just do a little bit better a little bit better and you just feel good and, and you can I, always I, go back to it i like i mean i personally love mcdonald's fries i think they taste amazing <laughs> like like six months ago or whenever i had them De December, cigarettes i had no but i'm just saying be, i'm just being honest the yeah. taste of them i love them i don't even have a craving at all to eat that shit like i don't even want to try it or anything it's like not any part. I mean, last time we filmed in Florida, probably we were just going to McDonald's every day and eating that shit. But just because it's quick and easy. But I mean, now I don't. I have no desire, which is nice. Um, man, there's something else I was gonna say. You guys got any other questions? Yeah. Oil pulling. Oil pulling? Yeah. I think it's fine. Yeah, what yeah. Fuck is that? Coconut like, oil. Yeah, oil pulling. Coconut oil. So like, it's like alternative mouthwash. Yeah, it's great. And this is actually important to talk about. Traditional mouthwash, horrible for you. I've heard that too. Horrible. Because you're killing all the bacteria. You're yeah. killing the good bacteria in your mouth. I've heard that. The reason you have bad breath is not because you don't use toothpaste. It's not because you don't use enough mouthwash or enough toothpaste. It's because you have the wrong type of bacteria. So if you have bad breath, like fix the quality of your life and the quality of your diet. And Key your, one. your breath will improve. Now, what do you think about this? I don't think it's fully his, his diet. My friend Key one, the love of this. I thought he was going to come. I, oh, I should have I had him, him I didn't think. Oh, he was on set today. He's filming something, a show or a movie. Right. Um, so my friend Kiwan, his breath doesn't smell at all. Like truly. When he smokes weed though, it's fucking, I'm not kidding. Like if I took a shit, ran five miles, came here and you were blindfolded and I bent over in your face, it would not smell as bad as his breath. Like his breath is the equivalent to actual like holding shit in your mouth probably. Like it smells so bad. He has really bad weed breath. Now why is that though? Why is it the- I don't know, man. You don't know? I don't know. I mean- it is, it's, I don't think it's a gut fully because it's like, he doesn't smell bad ever if we eat food or like normal. It's only when he smokes and it's like the craziest smell though. I don't know. I haven't been around enough people smoking weed to know, but if his breath smells okay when he's not doing that- Yeah. Then his gut is probably. I okay. can't even have a conversation with him. I'm not That's kidding. That's crazy. Like I'm like, dude, you gotta look that way. Dude. I'm <laughs> Don't serious. even look at like, me. Bro, I'm look the other way. I'm talking to the back yeah. of your head. But just so people his understand, breath smells, his breath smells so bad that even the back of his head would be like, <laughs> it goes not, around. It's not. Yeah, it's it goes, like. It's dude, so I feel. Like, I feel like when I'm talking to him, I can see it like coming out of his mouth, like the the fucking gases or whatever <sighs> it is. It's crazy. It's a mystery. It is. It's crazy. a mystery. But he's he's a great person. It's a mystery, Danny Duncan. But just so people understand what we were talking about with mouthwash, when you kill all the gut flora, all the flora in your mouth, when you kill all the bacteria, you can impair a lot of things. It can affect your blood pressure negatively. There's actually studies that impairs muscle growth in the gym. Mm. So like if you want to gain muscle mass, if you want to get stronger, you don't want to kill the bacteria in your mouth. So alternative. That's probably why I've been, I was using mouthwash. That's probably what happened. That's why, that's why. And now yeah. you're going to get better, yeah. right? What it was, I, I used mouthwash too much, you know, when I was younger. I can't gain, I can't get muscles. <laughs> I can't get ripped because I use mouthwash, yeah. bro. Um, some of the same stuff can be in toothpaste, but, um, so if you're using a toothpaste, I would say a toothpaste with no fluoride, you don't want toothpaste with fluoride. Dude, and that was a thing growing up or that, that was a thing that they would put into water that they said they still was put good, it in water. But, Your water here has they, fluoride. But they said that was good for you. Right. And isn't that all like the nasty, like toxic shit? So, you know, fluoride in water comes from the waste products of phosphate Dude, fertilizers. That's crazy. And there's, I think there's been 54 studies on, like correlations between fluoride in drinking water and IQ and 52 of them have found that the more fluoride you're exposed to, it, it affects IQ negatively. That's what happened to me because my mom when I was a kid would always- Me too, me, bro. She actually would give me the water with fluoride and my grandma would be like, yeah, that's good for you and good for your teeth. <laughs> good for your teeth. Yeah. And I mean, kids get tooth decay because they're eating junk food and they're not eating enough fat soluble vitamins, which occur in meat and eggs and cheese and healthy animal foods. So tooth decay is not because you don't brush your teeth. It's because you're eating junk food because you're not getting enough vitamin K2, enough vitamin D, enough vitamin A, all vitamins that occur in animal foods. Anyone out there who's insecure about their size of their penis. Okay. If you, yes. you told me you could grow half an inch in, in, in length and girth. This is a crazy study. It's this just, is real too, right? It's one study. I can send you the reference. Because my friend wants to know, but uh, I just need to get that information because it's for my friend. He wanted to know okay. about that. <laughs> you know? It's one study, right? It's, it's never been repeated, but it's one study of 14 men. So take it with a grain of salt, but they gave these men vitamin K2 in a mm -hmm. supplement form and vitamin D3 in a supplement form. And over six months, there was an average growth of half an inch in length and half an inch in girth in these men. And so you can think about this a couple of ways. You can think, all right, you can get vitamin D3 free from the sun, which you're told is bad for you, but clearly vitamin D from the sun is good for humans. And vitamin K2 occurs in animal foods. It's in cheese, it's in milk, it's in butter, it's in meat, it's in eggs. So these 
nutrients found in animal foods are uniquely valuable for humans. They help us with testosterone, which helps with sex drive, helps with erections, and potentially supplementation maybe increases the size of the penis. Again, the study's never been repeated. Who knows? We should, we, we should repeat it then. We could, we could pro- I'm sure we could find, I think we could find 14 guys to do this. Yeah, they're watching. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? There ain't a single guy I know that doesn't want a bigger dick. <laughs> you never said your age, but, but Paul's actually 63 years old. <laughs> I'm 46, but it's about, I mean, it's the same thing. 46, 63, same uh, thing. That's great. Yeah, yeah. But I don't feel that age. You know, I surf in Costa Rica. I live in an amazing, I mean, sorry, Puerto Rico, <laughs> Florida. <laughs> like We I live su- somewhere. Where I live, I surf and I, I don't, I don't feel limited, you know, by my age or by anything. And it, it, that, that's, to me, that's winning mm-hmm. because I, I don't know. I found surfing late in life. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I just want to be able to surf for as long as I can and jump off cliffs. I don't have kids, but you know, maybe I'll have kids eventually. I want to be able to play with them and just, I want, I don't want to be limited Dude, in, in any way. Those kids, man, I, they're going to be Good luck. pretty rad. They're going to be like, wanting some food and you're gonna get that you can't have that <laughs> i'm gonna be strict those kids are gonna have that's i mean i would probably do that with my to be honest with my kids though even my nieces man if i if they came and stayed here for a week or two i would never let them eat fucking mcdonald's right no chance i, mean, I wouldn't even let my i wouldn't even let my nieces drink soda i i, I don't want to talk shit about my sister though because it's like it's it's not her fault i feel like it's like the system but like the shit i see them when she's like cooking up that little microwavable mac and cheese i'm like dude no wonder she has fucking some lactose problems like that. I would have that problem too if I eat that shit. I mean, that's the, that's the saddest thing that I see is kids who have medical issues. Like me, but I mean, my story is not, is not as sad as a lot of other kids I see, but kids who have medical issues and they get medicated, but the, the parents don't understand that if they just improve the quality of the diet, that yeah. would go away. And so I know there's a lot of kids listening to this or young adults or adults in college, whatever, you, you guys and girls who have issues, like if skin issues or depression or thyroid issues, Maybe you don't talk to your friends about it because you're embarrassed, but also understand that like this, this podcast, this message is for you too. And the message is if you improve the quality of your diet, those things can go away. You don't need medications. That's the kind of shit that gets me fired yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's the kind of shit they don't teach you in medical that school. Because there's definitely people out there that have some issue that, yeah. that could probably be Whether it's gut, that. gut pain or gas or reflux or bad breath, like that stuff is fixable. Mm-hmm. You don't need a medication. All right, man. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, brother. Stoked. Great to meet you. It's good yeah. to hang out. <laughs>